Well, good, good evening, everyone. And it is evening here, obviously. I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop. And I'm going to sit here and just do a thrift haul. Now, obviously, I've been giving the kitchen counter quite a break. Um, just shaking it up a little. I'm sure I will be back with the dancing coffee man and all of that out on the uh, kitchen counter sometime soon. But I thought I'd give you a little bit of the cityscape, at least one portion of it from... Uh, the window behind me to sort of look at if you get bored. Everything that I'm going to show you tonight, I did find at local thrift shops, secondhand stores, church bazaars, that kind of thing, once in a while, a flea market. But right now, this is all thrift store stuff, and it's all listed. So anything that you see today that you might be interested in can be found in my eBay store, that's the old curiosity shop, and I have a link to the store in the description box just underneath the video. Let me start off, I've got stuff here on the window, stuff all around on the floor. We're going to start off with a really nice lusterware uh, jam pot, and we know it's jam rather than mustard because we see, uh, well, sort of either, I guess, raspberries there, or what red uh, some type of red berry there ra raspberry strawberry um, sometimes on these items that come in from Japan you can't really tell what kind of berry they're trying to convey to us but we know these are berries and so this would be uh, for jam on the breakfast table there's even a berry here as the finial on the lid and we have the matching spoon I think you can see the colors a little bit better when it's way back there. It's got the 1930s uh, made in Japan uh, mark on the bottom of it. It is in excellent condition and it could be on your breakfast table. It could be. I have a nice great big pink mixing bowl. Again, pink in different light looks peach, it looks orange, it looks amber, so you'll have to take my word. It is pink, 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 pink. It's a nice big mixing bowl, Depression era, and I always get these confused. Most of the Depression mixing bowls are going to be Anchor Hocking Federal or Hazel Atlas, most of the time, and uh, I don't, sometimes I just don't remember, but I, and it doesn't make a difference, but I think it's a Hazel Atlas. It's a great big one. Nice big mixing bowl. I also happen to have, pardon me for leaving the uh, screen momentarily, I also happen to have some bubble, anchor hocking bubble, and this may appear to be crystal. It is in the sapphire blue, the same color as the um, Philby. And so I have a cream and sugar, and I've got f uh, four, nine, nine and a half inch dinner plates. Uh, the sugar bowl has a little tiny chip right here at the top where the handle meets the top rim. You're not going to be able to see it, but it's right there. Luckily, it's right here where our hands are on the handle and you really don't feel it, but it's there. The creamer has a little chip on it, the base, which you see that chip right there? You don't see it terribly much, but... And the plates are in excellent condition, so you can add to your sapphire blue bubble set if you'd like. And this is a uh, 1940s into the 50s pattern made by our friends, Anchor Hawking. We're going to stick with Anchor Hawking, and I won't, I won't continue to go down to the floor. Once I get rid of what's on the floor, we'll then do what's on the window. I have two groupings of Fire King Philby Sapphire Blue. So I'm selling together in one auction the wonderful classic Trivet, which again, are you, seeing, are you able to see that it's blue, that it has that sapphire blue color? Uh, so uh, hot plate, Trivet, whatever you want to call it, 
You can serve all kinds of casseroles on top of this. And we see uh, oven glass right in the center, Fire King oven glass. This is chip free. I've got one Philby mixing bowl that I'm just selling the two together. Remember this mixing bowl when I bought it, uh, someone taped a casserole lid on top of it, which does not go with this. I'm saving the casserole lid for when I need it. So these two are going together in one auction. And I've got some more Philby for you. Here is the casserole with the correct lid. I have a second one of these lids if anybody needs one. Uh, there's our small casserole in the Philby pattern with its lid. Excellent condition. Oven glass. This is what you would sit. I should have put this with the trivet, but it's just the way I ended up taking the pictures. I didn't do it. This I have never had before. And it's huge. Again, it is a Philby uh, casserole. Great big thing. Uh, obviously missing um, a, a great big glass lid. Okay, well, listen, throw some tin foil over it and bake your macaroni and cheese just the same. If you are a fan of the Anchor Hocking Blue Philby. And it's definitely not crystal, it is blue. Again, as I said, it's kind of hard to see it in the light. All right, this is the last of what's down on the floor, and then I'll quit ducking. Um, here's a nice ball pitcher. I love these little tilted ball pitchers and with the ice lip on it. I think this is a Hazel Atlas product. Now, it looks like the quilted pattern, you know, the quilted diamond pattern, which I've seen um, more than one company made a sort of quilted diamond pattern, and Windsor usually is, is a pattern that looks like this. But then the diamonds are sort of smushed in. They have a little circle. A little, it's almost like somebody took their thumb and just squished in all the little, the little quilted diamonds. So I didn't go through any of my Hazel Atlas books, but I think that's what it is. And it's just a small one for the breakfast table in crystal. Perfect for your orange juice. And... I'm not really doing a whole lot with Pyrex these days, and you know me. My Pyrex is in A-plus condition. I see a lot of it. If it's beat up, scratched up, torn up, covered in somebody's nasty chicken grease, I don't buy it. I only buy the good stuff, and this is a beautiful one. Um, in fact, this is the best green bowl I've ever had. There's not a, there's one little pin prick somewhere on it which is gonna take me forever to find, but you get this up in the light. Boy, this is a beauty, and it's an old one. It's got that thick, it's got that generous thick rim, and it's also, if we look at the bottom, this is before they were putting those numbers on them. And you Pyrex, you know, you, know, you guys know this, um, trademark, um, so you have the early 1945, right when they came out in 1945, there was a few years when they weren't uh, putting the numbers on the bottom, and this one has no number on it, so this is an early one. Okay, and the measurements and everything, better pictures, full descriptions, as I always say, uh, can be found on the, uh, on the auction website, the eBay site. iced tea, and <laughs> I finished up my ham and sauerkraut with the apples in it. Ooh, it was so good. One thing I forgot to tell you. Um, you need to put a little liquid in your electric frying pan, and I bake the ham. I pour apple cider in there. So I pour about a quarter of a cup of apple cider into the bottom of the electric frying pan. Then goes the ham steak. Then goes the sauerkraut. Then goes the sliced apples. Then the ginger and the clove. And you want to slow cook it for a while. I cook mine for about an hour. That's what really gives the flavor to that uh, to the to the sauerkraut, because it's just sauerkraut out of a can. And then you want to check it, put it put it down on simmer. If you have a vent, and the old fry, uh, electric frying pans have a vent on the top, 
open up that vent and uh, go over there every 10 minutes or so, lift off your lid and dump, there'll be a lot of water condensation up in the lid. Dump that in your sink, put your lid back on. If it looks like it's drying out in there, add a little more apple cider. And that ham, of course the ham steaks are already cooked, but you really want to get that flavor into the sauerkraut and cook the apples. It's so good. Alright, let's see what else is for sale. Someone told me that they liked the pink candlesticks that I had, but they're waiting for a pair that is etched. Well, we'll wait no longer. It looks peach, but it's pink. Two beautiful candlesticks. Let me get my to where you can see it. Uh, and with a lovely floral etch, etching. You, can you see that? Well, actually, without my hand, you can see it. All right, so it has a nice floral etch on there, a scalloped design, uh, matching set. Very generous uh, base here on these. Now, this is, as I said, these are matching. Elegant Depression, 1930s. And I promise you we're not going to rattle through the names, but you know there's 5 or 10 or 15 companies that could have made it. But these are nice, no damage. That other pair that I had, there was an inner crack here. Uh, these are absolutely damage free and they're really pretty. Don't worry if it looks peach in the video. Take a look on the auction website and you should see that they're, that they're actually a pink color. Now, this is pink as well. Everybody knows that's a mayonnaise set and it's missing its underpants. I said it. Uh, it should have an underplate as you all know. These are always a three-piece set underplate, mayonnaise compote, and the ladle. Now I've said this before and some folks have said, well, I can't imagine like scooping out mayonnaise with that kind of a ladle. Well, remember, a lot of the salad dressings were homemade in those days. We did have Hellman's in the 1930s, and, uh, but you, we wouldn't put a jar of mayonnaise on the table and smear it on our sandwiches with a knife like we do today. And it was used in many cases as a salad dressing. And you would, you would, this was an elegant way of serving it. You could get a dollop of the mayonnaise and plop it on top of your, uh, believe it or not, on top of a pear sliced in half on, on your, you know, iceberg lettuce. And I want you to see that it matches. I love to hear the bells. That's not my clock on the mantle. I stop the clock so it's not annoying during videos, but the bells are in the Inquirer, uh, old newspaper tower over here. Uh, that building is from the 1920s, and the bells, it's not a recording, they're actually great big old bells up there that strike. Anyway, there's the mayonnaise set. And you don't have to just serve mayonnaise in it. You can do anything you want with it in these days. I actually don't like mayonnaise. Um, anybody else like that? I really don't like it. This was a popular pattern from the 30s into the 80s. Imperial made it. Imperial? Wait a minute. Anyway, it's Cape Cod. <laughs> uh, Imperial, yeah, Imperial. Uh, it was made for Mother's Oats in 19, I want to say 33. It's a very recognizable uh, pattern. There's a lot of it out there because it was made from the 30s into the 80s. So if you want to get excited about actually being able to discover some of the clear patterns, memorize your Cape Cod pattern. You're going to see a lot of it. This is just a small cream and sugar in really good condition. Do not look at my fingernails. I was working all day in the garage restoring one of those old radio speakers that came out of a basement and uh, some other wooden items and I am not one to wear gloves. I just I have to have my hands in it. I know a lot of people want me to wear gloves. Yeah, I can't wear gloves. I gotta get my hands on it. And um, 
I'm all out of the hand, the hand cleaner that I normally use. This, I think, is, a, is an anchor hocking piece as well. It's a peach luster vase, and uh, it looks the bottom of it looks exactly like a... Uh, oh, come on. The bottom of it looks just like the bottom of the, the anchor hocking mugs, the little de-handled mugs. But that's going to be the peach luster, which I'm not... The vase, 1930s, ribbed, good shape, good for hot, good for autumn decorating. Which we still have a few more weeks. Now this is a lovely. It's Wilcox um, Willow. It's Blue Willow. You can see the whole name on the auction website. But it's a made in England piece of Blue Willow. It's a nice platter. It's a nice size. This is, as I told you, this is nine inches here. So you can see we've got nine inches across, about nine inches across by maybe 12. Um, no chips on this blue willow pattern, and it is in English. I'll hold it still in a minute. <laughs> Let me see the label. I think we all know the blue willow pattern. No chips, no chips, almost no utensil marks on it. There's one very tight crack, pardon the expression, uh, hairline crack right here, right there. Now you can see it. There's, and you can see it, a little bit of staining on that. Um, but it, it's, you know, I, it's, that crack is there. Now it only extends maybe three inches down um, and you hardly see it. It's mostly on the back, but the crack does, does go all the way through, but you can't really see it on the front. And, you know, I don't like things to be cracked, but I don't often find platters. Other than that crack, it's in really, really good condition. So it's still very usable. Or even as display for those of you who, who collect uh, and, or use your Blue Willow. I just sold a Cameo cookie jar with its lid a few days ago. Well, here's another one. No lid. Um, no lid, but there's a little Cameo ballerina dancer in there. It's the cookie jar without the lid. Okay. Hawking, 1930s. We've talked about this pattern before. This is a beautiful umber uh, tone. Now, this is made for farberware by Lee Potteries, and it's a very nice uh, hot plate trivet type thing. Very uh, it, um, typical of a 1930s, 40, 1930s, 40s pattern. I really like this. There aren't any chips or cracks on it. It's nice and heavy, too. Uh, so it just has that beautiful buff color to it. And a typical pattern for that era, which, you know, that's that, the pattern that I like, the era that I like. I showed you this before, and I finally, I do have this listed. This is the oldest of all of those little things that I bought. It's a French's black pepper tin, and it's an original. It's not a reproduction. I think I've got it upside down for the camera. This has to be at least the 1920s. Okay, it could be, I don't think it's much older than that, but that's nice for you tin, for you tin collectors. These two pieces, I think, are Cambridge. I'm getting a Cambridge feel or maybe high C. Sometimes Cambridge is marked with the letter C. Sometimes high C is marked with the H, but not always either one. But I'm still getting, and honestly, I just haven't had the time to go through my depression glass books and look them up, but I love this color blue. I hope it shows up in the video. It's, this is really good glass. Pardon my fingerprints. Uh, it may look sort of purplish, but it's a beautiful blue. We have two pieces that match. Uh, here is a small candy dish bowl type of thing. 
and this is sometimes called a bonbon when the edges are curled up like that. But let's take a closer. This blue, I really should look these up because there's probably a name to this blue. The company's named their colors. It's not Caprice, uh, but it's, a, it's just such a rich blue color. I really do need to look this up. You can just get hints, hints of it in certain light. But two pieces that are unmarked in this beautiful blue. And they're listed. And I think I put in my listing something like, you know, good quality depression glass, Cambridge Falstoria, Heisey, something like that. Mm hmm. Something like that. All right, let's look at. A pretty little opalescent, opalescent glass dish with all these little feet on the bottom. One of them has a little chip, the foot. They're very small. I think there's like six of them, maybe five. One, two, three, four, five. There's six of them. No mark on this. Don't know who made it. I've got a book over there on opalescent glass. It's that thick. And... Um, I should be leafing through that book to see, is it Jefferson Glass, is it Northwood, who made it? But somebody made it somewhere probably between 1910 and 1920. Uh, and it's, it's purdy. Put your little broccoli and celery sticks on that, carrot and celery sticks on that. And then two kitchen items and... Um, Let's do the two kitchen items. Um, food chopper. People kept saying, it's a nut chopper. It's a nut chopper. Well, you can chop anything in it you want. It really is a food. This is a nut grinder. We know that these have been popular for a long time. And this one with the pattern on it, which I'm not, there we go. You see it a little bit there. This is more of a mid set, more of a 50s, 60s kind of thing. My mother used this one almost identical to this that she's had since the 60s. That's got Hazel Atlas on the bottom. It's very clean. You can, okay, holiday baking. Grind your nuts the way your granny did in this. That's a good one. And then this one too can chop nuts. It can chop any kind of, it could chop celery or onions. It's just a food chopper. And it's got, we've got here the, uh, the different, you know, cup, half cup, quarter cup, all of that up and down the sides. And the, uh, the wooden piece inside is original. That's to protect the blade from hitting the glass on the bottom. So there you go with that. And then finally, these were so popular. Um, really in the 60s. And this one is a Japan. This one is a made in Japan. And uh, this is not Mary from biblical, from the Bible. Uh, and there were many of d d different styles. And they were they were off they off, often depicted very beautiful uh, women and you can see here the face is just really pretty the way it's been painted the way it's been done and uh, I'm I'm not gonna get into possibly what her heritage or what country she may be representing because there's just it could be all over the place so she's just a beautiful face. And they're not glass eyes, it's all paint. Doesn't that lipstick look like it's would like it would just like leave a spot right on my collar? Um, and it's got the felt on the bottom, and then it says, I think it's this might uh I can't I can't see it. Anyway, it's one of those red foil labels from one of the companies in Japan. There's a little something going on back there. It looks like old scotch tape that turned yellow and didn't quite come off. But there she is in really good condition. If you collect these beautiful head vases, from, from that era, it's just amazing that there's no blemish on this face at all. So I stop rubbing my hands all over it. All right, put that back down. Okay, that's it. Uh, as I said, it's all in the old curiosity shop. I am going to be, uh, again, as I said, back with more this week. I'm working on a lot of projects, and I'm going to be finishing up some and giving you some updates on some things that 
uh, you've been waiting for. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have yourselves a happy night. Go and make that ham and uh, sauerkraut. Let me know what you think. Don't forget the diced apples. Bake it in the apple, apple cider and put some clove and cinnamon in it. You'll really like it. And you don't have to have the pickled beets on the side. All right, that's it. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying, wait for the cat. So long for now.